I hope you are well. And thank you for clicking on bereavement and trauma. Apologies if you have lost someone recently and that's why you're watching this. I just want to say here I'm not saying that everyone who experiences grief and goes through a bereavement will develop a mental illness, but I'm trying to explain as part of my trauma series, which is this which this is a part of, that if we um, experience that and we go through that that really awful, terrible time, some of us may be likely to develop mental health problems, mental illness, such as things like depression, anxiety, PTSD, phobias, and many, many other things as well. In this video, I'm gonna be specifically talking about complicated grief disorder, which is a form of mental illness, something that I've been learning a lot about recently, but I'm not here to diagnose, I'm never here to diagnose anyone, and it's, and it's not good to self-diagnose either. It's if you feel like you're struggling with something and maybe you're battling with something in a different way, and you think there's something going on that you need to be looking after, then go and see your primary mental health care, your general practitioner, or maybe if you are in, in the care of um, mental health services, speak to someone there. I also want to say here that we are all different and we all cope with things in very different ways. We all reach for um, other people in different ways. We all experience life differently because we are all different people. So I'm going to be talking about that now. And I just want to say here that grief is very, very hard and it is a very, very sad, powerful um, time for anyone. And my heart is going out to you right now if you are currently experiencing the loss of someone. So we all sadly experience um, grief in our lives um, from maybe people that are close to us or maybe even people that we've not connected to for a very long time. And it is a very sad time, really, really sad. Um, and we can experience some, some, sorry, apologies there. We can experience some of the following things. So fear, sadness, a longing, Maybe even feeling ashamed about how we're feeling, thinking, well, I don't usually feel like this, so I, I shouldn't be feeling like this. Maybe angry, helpless, let down, numb, guilty, many, many things. But grief, but when does grief become something more? When does it go beyond these feelings, which most of us, I'm sad to say, will experience in our lives? So it could take you to, towards experiencing such mental health problems as depression, anxiety, PTSD, phobias, I've already touched on that bit, and maybe even substance abuse as well. But we're all different in, and we are, you know, we're all wonderful human beings and we all experience things in different ways. Um, and this is the same with grief, you know, what one person experiences will, be, will differ very, very much to someone else. Um, some may be quicker to bounce back than others, and it's it's a normal, so I hate that word, but it's normal that will, grief will place a strain on your day-to-day -day life. Um, and living will usually take, sorry, and living sort of back to your normal self, back to how you were, will usually take a long time after the bereavement. And it might take you a while to adapt this, to adapt to your life after this, adapt to your behavior and things like that after this has happened. You won't ex be expected to bounce back. And if you have lost someone recently, my, again, my heart goes out to you, give yourself time. Don't expect it to be done with in a few weeks or even a couple of months, and maybe even a, f a couple of years. You know, we w it's never gonna be gone from us, okay? We've lost someone, that's hard. But it's never gonna be completely gone. It just means that there'll be times in your life when you'll, you'll be able to cope with it a bit better. But then there might be days that just come out of the blue and it hits you like a brick. And that is relatively normal, okay? So even after accepting the loss, there may be still be a few days that you kind of think, do you know what, today I'm really battling with that. I've been fine for months and I haven't thought about that person. And maybe it's on an anniversary or a birthday or, uh, you know, the, the day they passed or their funeral or, or something like that. It's going to be more impactful on those days. It's going to be harder to process on those days. So when you are battling with it, don't beat yourself up because it's, it's a very, very hard time for you. And give yourself that time to say, okay, today's a bad day but tomorrow may be better. And if it's not, but it keeps going and it keeps persisting and it doesn't go on and you aren't able to go back to your normal life. You aren't perhaps maybe able to return to work. You may not be able to be around the same people again or, or certain people, sorry. Then this is when it becomes a problem. So these feelings can be 
very very overwhelming and over a period of time people people gradually do bounce back so if this has happened to you this isn't forever this isn't a permanent state however for some it can be and i'm going to be talking more about that so when grief becomes complicated people feel unable to bounce back so it persists it keeps going on this could usually have something to do with the experience that leaves the person who has been bereaved feeling stuck with struggling to cope with the emotional impact of their grieving most researchers agree that complicated grief which i'll be talking about more in sh uh, shortly uh, might begin to be identifiable so people might be able to see it or you might be able to see it in yourself from about six months after a bereavement but everyone is different this isn't a rule you don't need to get to six months and go well i should be fine now i you know i, I shouldn't be feeling this anymore everyone is different but that's based on some research so complicated grief what is complicated grief it's a form of grief that takes hold of a person's mind and won't let go it's natural to experience this to experience grief but some but sorry it's natural to experience grief after someone close to us dies but complicated grief is different so there are typical reactions to a separation from a loved one whether you are close to them or you're distant in any way so strong feelings of yearning for a longing of the person it's almost like the death has just happened frequent intense loneliness or feeling like it, life is empty or meaningless thoughts of the person uh, seem to fill you or intrude on your thoughts when you're trying to do other things so your ability to concentrate may be diminished too so when we're talking about mental illness we are talking about troubled thoughts or distorted thoughts disturbed feelings and perhaps dangerous behaviors and if you go back to my what is my what is mental illness video thoughts feelings and behaviors are all disturbed when you have mental illness and that is the same with complicated grief so you could have troubling thoughts underlying emotional pains and using ways to try and avoid the pain so let's talk about troubling thoughts and again these will probably happen a lot of these will probably happen in the first six months six months based on that research but if it continues this is when you need to address the issue this is when you need to seek that help and it, you know you may think actually after five months i really need to do this or four months because maybe other people around you seem to be getting over it but again we're all different okay so don't put a rule on this that it has to be after six months but if this is going on and it is relentless it's impacting your life preventing you from leading the life you had then get help sorry if i've repeated myself there so troubling thoughts so it could be something's really bothering you bothering you about the death of that person maybe they can't, maybe you can't shake that feeling or perhaps that you think you or society at large or someone else has failed failed you in an unforgettable way so, and also frequent counterfactual thinking so maybe thinking um, about troubling circumstances or consequences of the death so perhaps wishing and imagining how things might have been different so living in that well this has happened but actually what would it be like if this hadn't happened and what would it be like where would i be where would they be what would be going on and then perhaps also focusing on self-critical or anxious thoughts about the intensity or grief so a person may want to hide their grief from others because they think that others will be critical um, and that this will keep them isolated and we don't grieve well alone so it may be that you're focusing so much on these thoughts that you think well i shouldn't be around other people because i'm dealing with this very differently and i need to hide away and this can make you isolated and then perhaps make you reach for substance abuse or self-harm something to kind of take away that pain because you're not being able to be around people who um to, to share that pain and as it says in my research grieving is not good when you're on your own I'm not saying you will pick up substance abuse or self-harm and things like that and you might already have a propensity to develop those things because of your previous life experiences but that's just an example of what isolation may do to some people because of this bereavement um, and thinking actually that maybe that you shouldn't feel grief because if you if you don't feel this grief that you're betraying them maybe that resonates with you You're perhaps thinking that having holding on to this grief is your only remaining tie to the deceased you may even have angry or resentful thoughts about the death so negative thoughts as to why it happened 
perhaps resentment towards others that don't understand. So you may think, well, they're, they're over it. Why aren't they crying every day? Why aren't they doing this? Why can't, why are they managing to go to work? Remember, we're all different, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, if you're going to feel angry or resentful, you can't help those feelings. They are emotions. We can't help them. It's just what you do, do with those emotions. Sorry, they're negative thoughts and emotions. So it's what you do with those thoughts and your behavior because of them and how you feel because of them that we need to be addressing. You may also have the thoughts that the death should never have happened, most likely I imagine so. Not fair and it's someone else's to blame. So you may say, well it was their fault because they said this or they did that. And again, it's it's totally normal to think like this. It's just if it's taken to, to if it's still keeping you in this state for maybe six months onwards, six months after the event, apologies there. So, so we've talked about troubling thoughts. Now let's talk about unending emotional pain. So it may be hard to put those painful feelings to one side and you never, you perhaps never get any respite from that. And you pers- and you may even not think, of, you may not even give yourself permission to do this. So you may feel it's wrong to have any joy or satisfaction in your life. Perhaps feeling happy, that, that, that pushes away the thought. Sorry, perhaps feeling, feeling happy um, it shows that, you know, Sorry, I'm just going to repeat this bit again. So you may feel it's wrong to have any joy or satisfaction in your life because the loved one can't be here anymore. So because they're not here and they can't experience joy and satisfaction, you may kind of push away the thing, well, I shouldn't be happy or have any joy or satisfaction in my life. Apologies there. Also, people with low self-compassion. So perhaps you're not necessarily an emotional person. Some people are experience of very, very intense emotions. Other people are lower down the scale. It's all a scale and we are all different. But because you don't, maybe you haven't felt that self-compassion or, or any kind of sort of extreme emotions, you may think, well, why, why, why am I you know, you may be critical, sorry, of yourself. So you might think, well, why, I need to snap out of this. I, I, I should be doing this and I should be doing that. Um, and you, this may make you feel separated from others around you because they may not. Um, and uh, the, you may be caught up in your emotions. Um, and the feeling there's, there is um, this way, can, sorry, feeling as though that there, that's all there is and it can make you feel like all your time is spent feeling this emotional pain and that can be draining that can make you feel really rubbish about yourself can and then that can make you feel even more sad and joyless and not feeling happy with your life and this can make you then behave in certain ways so now i'm going to talk about the behavior so just to finish on the emotional bit we sadness is a perfectly normal human emotion but it's when it takes up our days all the time and we could be going into depression, which is a mood disorder. And if we are experiencing that depression daily and for for more than two or three weeks at a time, that could be a sign that you are developing depression. And and, um, if you think that is the case, please watch my Spotting the Signs of Mental Illness video because that goes into all the signs that you need to look out for to talk about that talk about depression and if that is happening we need to get support as soon as possible because it doesn't go away on its own and it may be that you need to take some medication or it may be that you need to go to some counseling i would suggest that grief counseling is very very important because it could help you to offload any sort of um any uh, underlying feelings that you have and let you process the emotions let you process the trauma because if you don't process it in the in a healthy way you could go on to having really disturbed thoughts disturbed th- um, emotions and disturbed behavior so yeah going back to the behavior there um so sometimes people have so this could sorry when we are experiencing a grief such things like our eating sleeping exercise our daily routine can all be put out of you know they can all be kind of taken away from us and we may eat less we may eat more we may sleep less sleep more we may sort of think well I you know I don't see the point of doing exercise I don't see the point of having a routine and when those things in our life what I would say are solid foundation a good baseline when those things are messed up sorry messed up uh, are are not working as they were before it, it will mean that you're 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 not taking care of yourself and not taking care of yourself can then perhaps also help you to further develop mental health problems 
So with this will, this is a normal thing that will happen again when someone passes, when we lose someone because of a bereavement. However, it's when these are really disturbed that we are perhaps completely not eating at all and we are dramatically losing weight. Or on the other side, perhaps going towards binge eating, which is consuming huge and huge amounts of food. And you will notice after you know a while that you are putting on a lot of weight. And other things as well. So sleeping, if we are developing insomnia or hypersomnia, insomnia and not being able to sleep, hypersomnia, sleeping too much. These are all mental health problems, it's such as eating disorders and, and sleeping disorders. These are mental health problems. And if you're not getting enough sleep, it's going to make you perhaps more depressed or even anxious or even perhaps um, not or not eating enough. This could then make us develop, a, you know, having to go and be hospitalized to get support for our mental, for our eating disorders. Apologies there. Not only does that side of our behaviour change, because of our thoughts, because of our feelings, the three are all linked. Behaviour affects our thoughts and our feelings, our feelings affects our thoughts and behaviours and whatever the last one is that I can't remember what I just said, I think our, our emotions our emotions can affect our feelings and our behaviour. So they all kind of interact with each other. So it may be that you're having those sort of disturbed patterns of sleeping and eating, but it also could mean that you're going towards drugs, such as street drugs, prescription drugs, to escape the pain. And a lot of the time, when we go towards these behaviours of substance abuse, it's because that they they release dopamine um, and, in, and those can make us feel good. And it's that release of dopamine that can help us escape from that pain. And if we are escaping from that pain, that means we're not feeling it. But at the same time, if we're going to this, we're going to go into a spiral of behaviour that can help us become more isolated and more out of control, affecting then our th feelings and our thoughts. And some people may even develop phobias because of the, the, what actually happened and, and how it happened. And, you know, perhaps it happened in a certain place that you may feel actually terrified to go back to that place. And that means you may require some sort of exposure techniques to be able to get you back to that healthy place where you can be able to sort of say, well, I can go back to that place now. Because if things start to ruin your lives, if your thoughts, feelings and behaviours take over what is going on around you, impacting your relationships, your your friendships, your work or your school or your college, then this is really, really bad and you will need to get some help. Um, I hope that has explained how trauma can help, um, help, I don't like that word, sorry, that trauma can lead us to developing mental health problems. If you have experienced a trauma recently, either through bereavement or anything else, then really, really, I can't stress this enough, even though I've repeated myself many times in this video, apologies if I have, um, you need to get this help because things don't go away, they can escalate and then you can get to a point where you're, you know, perhaps alone, suffering, and then you may lead to even think, thinking of suicide and ending your own life to take away all the pain or maybe even to be with the deceased or feel that you are closer to the deceased. Thank you for watching. Please, as always, share any comments you have in the space below. Tell me, um, you know, what your experience of this is. Do you know anyone that's experienced this after a grief? And do you, did you know about complicated grief disorder? Because I also didn't. So it's taught me something today as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And thank you to Oliver Locke for this suggestion for this video. And um, I will see you next time.